Hi. Um, so we will get started with the talk. Uh, we will be taking up the questions towards the end, if time permits. Uh, so this talk about is uh, the Python serialization in terms of uh, multiprocessing and multithreading, basically parallel computing using Python language. My name is Sam Raza. I work at D Shaw India. D Shaw India is a part of the D Shaw Group, which is a global investment and technology firm. Uh, it is uh, known is it is known as a pioneer in quantitative investing. And uh, it's based out of New York, and I am I work in Hyderabad. Yeah, so this is the overview of the topics that we will be covering today. We will uh, see uh, the limitations and advantages of both multi threading and multi processing in Python. We will, we will then move on to uh, the interprocess communication, how it happens generally in Python. And then we will see the serialization part, which is called pickling in Python, how it is achieved. And there are two types of pickling. One is by name reference, and the another one is by value. Lastly, we will move on to some future features of the Desco pickle. This is the pickle module which we use at the DShaw group for our uh, quantitative research and general development as well. So what is parallel computing? So basically, it's just like you have a big problem and you break down it into smaller problems and try to reduce the wall time by increasing maybe CPU time or maybe uh, you reduce the IO bound task time. You don't want to pull on anything. You want your program to finish faster. And for that, we can leverage various techniques like using multiple cores on a single machine or using multiple machines in a grid. As I said, like you can reduce the IO waiting times on various responses. Another technique is like use an asynchronous programming uh, using an event loop. So we will be focusing on mainly two techniques here. One is threading and another one is multiprocessing. So multi-threading threads, people are, uh, it is a general notion that uh, Python threads are of no use. Uh, but that's, that's not entirely true. We have some limitations in Python language with threads. And that may, the main limitation is that only one thread is executed at a time. And this is because every thread needs JIL uh, to get executed. So what, in, what interpreter does is like it switches in between threads and achieves the concurrency. But uh parallelism like it, it it is not able to leverage multiple cores uh, to actually do the computation work that's why it is generally said that uh, python threads are just good for io bound tasks and not for cpu bound tasks we will see examples for both of these cases so consider one example wherein we just want to open 16 urls and uh, we do this using a single thread we just start a Python interpreter and nothing special. We st do uh, start opening these URLs serially in a loop. So as you can see, when one task ends, the only then another task starts and uh, everything happens in serial. This takes around six seconds. Now, uh, we will try to use threads for this uh, particular problem. So how in Python 3 plus, we have very uh, good library called thread pool executor uh, in which you can spawn four threads as simple as in three lines like this. So here we are using four threads. So as you can see, as soon as any thread is uh, completing one task, it is starting another task. And the wall time of, down, uh, of the task is actually reduced. It is It has come down from around six seconds here in the serial one to around two seconds. Now, but what if we uh, do the same task using multiple processes? So as you can see, the time is slightly higher than uh, when we were using four threads. These are the results. So in serial, it took around six seconds with threads, 2.1 seconds in processes, 2.8 seconds. 
why four processes took more time than four threads was that there is an overhead of spawning new processes and uh, getting the things done and uh, getting back the result from all, all those processes. So parallelism in for this task is achieved with both multi-threading and multi-processing. But there is a slight overhead with multi-processing. So threading is the correct solution to go. Now we will consider another uh, task wherein like we want to actually use CPU. Counting to a very large number and just incrementing a counter. So the results of this uh, uh, task are used. Like in serial, it, it takes around 4.2 seconds. But when, I, when we try to use four threads, it is more than what we were doing in serial. But if we use four processes, it takes like just 1.9 seconds and we get the benefit. So why using the threads actually deteriorated the performance? The reason is, one th as I said earlier, only one thread is executed at a time. So when you have some CPU intensive task, uh, the Jill has to switch between various threads and uh, execute those on the CPU. That's why because of this overhead and concurrency between the threads, uh, uh, the performance actually worsens. But if you use multiprocessing, you have separate Python interpreters. There is no issue of Jill contention and you achieve the required parallelism. So when in multiprocessing in Python, how actually that works internally? You're, you have a master process and you spawn multiple processes to take advantage of uh, N CPUs. So you, here in the diagram, when the master process is communicating with, this, with its workers, it is sending these Python objects. And then it gets results from all these worker processes and combines and give you, gives you the actual result. So how it achieves is using serialization. The Python objects are serialized into a byte stream and then uh, it is sent to the worker processes. And then worker processes send this byte stream again uh, in the form of Python uh, result objects and back to the my, uh, master process. And the module which is used to achieve this is called pickle. So here, uh, what, what we are trying to do is we are uh, just reading the process ID and uh, we are launching just one worker using the process pool executor so as you can see the current PID, pid is different from the pid of the sub process that uh, we are launching so everything works fine okay processing is working great now when we try to do the same thing with a lambda it breaks and the error it, it is throwing is that it can't pickle function objects that basically means Python interpreter is not able to serialize this Lambda function. So what went wrong is like pickle module has a limited set of objects that of Python objects that it can serialize. It doesn't work for lambdas. It doesn't work for classes and functions defined in your IPython, Jupyter notebooks, any or any code which lives outside of a module. So how pickle works internally, it takes the fully qualified name of the Python objects and it dumps just the name. And on the deserialization part, it reads that name and uh, recreates those Python objects. So here you can see when I'm dumping os.getPid function, which we used earlier, it is dumping cposix and getPid. That means this uh, getPid function lives in this cposix module. And it, these both things, the cposix module as well as the getPid function are available in the sub process. That's why it is able to launch. That is why it, it, the multiprocessing is not breaking. But when we try to do the same thing with the, with the Lambda, we see the same error again. Because Lambdas are unnamed functions. There is no reference to them. And even if you put this Lambda in a module and do function equal to Lambda this and define, you will still get the same error because lambdas are not by default serializable using pickle module here is another example like uh, we commonly use uh, ipython or jupyter notebook so if you just write a function and try to leverage multiprocessing uh, on that function things will again break so here i wrote a function called test underscore func 
And when I uh, try to execute it using the process pool, I got, get this error that this function is not found this module main. So when you start your IPython, the module's name is main. And when this when a sub process is also launched, that the name of the sub process is also main. But you define this uh, test func in the master process, but it is not defined in the sub process. That's why uh, pickle module says, oh, I was not able to find this function in the main module in the sub process. We have this function in the uh, master, the main process, the IPython process we launched. So what is the solution? So if if just if pickle just wants uh, the name references, then what we can do to optimize it? We can actually serialize the code. And that is generally termed as serialize objects by value. And not just the code, we, we also have to recursively get all the variables in the local scope, in the global scope, the closest, the module name, its qualified name, everything we have to take and take all these things in the sub process to recreate the exact function that we were defining in the master process. And open source libraries like Dill and Cloud Pickle actually cater to this particular problem mainly. So this is a sort of information we need, the minimum information we need to serialize this Lambda. The uh, Lambda function we saw in, with which the multiprocessing break. So we have this byte code, which is, which is basically the source code in a serialized byte, byte form. We have its name, we have its module. So we can leverage this take in the sub process to create the exact function Lambda uh, and execute that and work around the uh, pickling problem. Now, okay, we have this solution by why doesn't it, uh, why isn't it implemented in the vanilla Python? So there are two points mainly, one is the security flaw. So you are sending a byte stream, but there is no security mechanism around it. And if some malicious code is injected as, as, as this byte stream, then it becomes a security issue. So when pickle uh, uh, serializes by name, during deserialization, it actually goes to a file and tries to find uh, that Python object by name. So in our example, uh, it was trying to find a function test func in the module main. That is safer because people can actually uh, provide better security for their uh, source files. Second is stale code. For, uh, so if we uh, we said that we will serialize the source code but what if the source code changes after we serialize but before we deserialize that is also an issue so let's see so like we have this limitation limitation should we really do it so there is a, a trade off between use of uh, multi processing to speed up your programs and writing only pickleable objects. So pickle module gives you a limited set of objects which you can use. If you just use those, well and good. But if you want to use lambdas or if you want to write a, a, your code in IPython sessions, it won't work. For the second thing, the stale code problem, we have this uh, assumption in our multiprocessing framework that uh, the time it takes to send uh, from master to worker process and execute that code, it is short lived. We just want to do some testing. Most of the times in our IPython and Jupyter notebooks, we just want to develop something quickly and we don't want to get these pickle errors because when you eventually move that code to a module, it will start working. If I move that function test fun to a module, then pickle will not complain about it. So it is it's a big problem and uh, very crucial for quick development. Also, uh, if you can ensure, ensure a secured network in, in a data center or your inter internal network of the company, then uh, the security, security flaw becomes a lesser concern. So as I told you, towards the end, we will see about Disco Pickle. So Disco Pickle is the Pickle module to retrade, which we use at Disha and company. So uh, we got this performance numbers. As you can see, like, uh, the pickle module used at DShaw can be 100 times faster, even uh, more times faster than this open source solution available like Dylan Cloud Pickle. So uh, the highlighted are like uh, it's taking around 30 seconds 
for a big list, but till and cloud pickle take uh, 30 minutes around to serialize the same Python object. So it's very performant than any open source solution. So what have we done special to achieve that performance number? So we actually uh, leverage the C Python implementation of the pickler class. So you have two implementations of pickle in C Python. One is pure Python and one is actually implemented in C. So we leveraged the C Python implementation in C. While the open source solutions like Dill and Cloud Pickle, they just uh, subclass the Python, pure Python implementations and the looping and everything happens in uh, Python and that's why they are slower. Another point uh, that we have achieved is like uh, importing the Desco Pickle has no side effects as such. So when you import Dill, it uh, removes this Pickle dispatch registry. So what this this uh, dispatch uh, dict is it it is a mapping from the type of object to the to the function which should be used to pickle or serialize that type. So if you import till, as you can see, uh, it is overriding with its own functions with dill and um, uh, for dict and function and for other types also it injects all its uh, serializing pickling functions. This doesn't happen when uh, with this just tropical. So uh, another major point uh, advantage is that the desktop pickle uses the special serialization functions only when required. It doesn't uh, like override the uh, functions in the dispatch table like uh, by default and uh, like uh, only use when only when uh, it is required. So it, this has a big advantage is that when you generate that byte stream, it will actually have the reference to the function uh, you use. And uh, uh, like this is not uh, with a desktop pickle, the probability reduces because with Dill, you will always get some reference to Dill function. But with desktop pickle, uh, if the native pickling works, then uh, it uses the native native pickling otherwise it just uh, falls back to the special serialization functions. So this uh, thing we have been doing for over a decade now and uh, before Python 3.8, there was no way to uh, leverage the C Python implementation of the classes. Uh, so this is a sort of a point of foresight. Okay, I think uh, we have done with the talk. Um, I would be happy to take any questions. Hello. Hi, Satyam. Thanks for joining. Hey, hi. Uh, sorry, how would I uh, pronounce your name? It's just say Sam. It's a bit like Sam. <laughs> uh, you can say Sam. Hey, hi, Sam. Um, so, quick question here. Uh, work with um, different versions. So, say, uh, at times it happens that uh, within different teams, different versions of Python are used because the servers which they are working on remote servers, they're different. Mm -hmm. So um, they have a code segment and I've already pickled in my code and that is used somewhere uh, down the stream. So uh, mm -hmm. does it have anything to do with uh, different versions? Would it break? So say I, uh, one team has 3.6 and others 3.7, uh, mm -hmm. thanks banking domains do not usually upgrade uh, their versions uh, mm -hmm. as soon as they're launched. So, um, mm -hmm. uh, and my team was still working with 3.5. I just, uh, at least, you know, it was a head breaker to uh, make them to, you know, upgrade their version. So 3.7 mm -hmm. and still they're not upgrading in 3.8 or 9. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what I'm talking about. So uh, if I have, um, my code written in 3.6 and 
I pass it on to some team. They're using Triple Seven. Would the code break uh, due to this pickling stuff? Yes, or sir. Pickle so, handles it well because it is like, C native uh, C Python implementation. You are talking about right, right, so, right. Yeah, uh, Satyam. So as we are uh, actually serializing the code, and it will have op codes and other things. And C Python implementation doesn't guarantee that those op codes will change. So at least within major versions between two and three, we were not able to achieve uh, interportability. But within minor versions like 3.5 and 7, it should work fine because uh, we have code uh, like uh, move from 3.6 to 7 to 8. So uh, that has not been an issue for us within minor versions. Okay, because uh, I was using naive uh, pickle package which Python provides, which isn't pure Python. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it used to take a lot of time to pickle and um, then again load. So on initialization, I use that load stuff. So mm -hmm. maybe I'll try this out and see uh, how much it improves my performance. Sure, sure. Thank, thank you for sharing this thing. Thank you, Satyam. So, uh, Sandar Raj is asking, how does C Python work with Desktop Pickle? So, uh, we basically actually there are multiple ways you can make it work with Desktop uh, with C Python. You can actually write extra C extensions with the same code, or you can even uh, patch the interpreter. So, we uh, we are considering open sourcing our uh, Desktop Pickle and. Uh, uh, we, I would invite you to follow our D shop page on GitHub uh, for uh, further updates. So I'm uh, getting uh, uh, some questions around async programming. So within async programming uh, uh, in Python, you can only execute things. Uh, you can achieve concurrency. You can switch between various tasks. But if you really want to uh, leverage multiple cores, uh, then you will have to again come to multiprocessing. And this serialization will come into play with multiprocessing as well as if you want to launch your tasks on grid, on a grid of computers. I will. Uh, Post it. So I've uh, in the chat I've posted uh, the link to our uh, GitHub channel. Uh, there you can find more updates. Okay. So like uh, Vignesh is asking uh, to explain more about async and parallel processing. So basically Vignesh, uh, if you so see from the user's perspective, you just want to speed up your programs and you have to decide what type of problems you have. If you have IO bound problems, uh, then you can just use threads, then Python will work fine. But if you actually want to leverage the CPU, then you have to go to multiple processes. With asynchronous programming, if your tasks are even driven, so uh, you want to uh, like uh, checkpoint your state every 30 minutes or so, then you can just register uh, your callbacks with the async uh, loops like uh, async IO uh, library in Python 3. Uh, and if you, like you can have a lot of uh, these. Uh, uh, event based tasks that you can uh, leverage the event loop for with uh, multi processing or uh, computations on grid you will have to use multi uh, like serialization uh, to achieve performance boost Yes, I am <laughs> joined today. Yes, again. Yeah, so uh, you were discussing about uh, parallel and uh, things. Um, I also would like to share.
because um, sure. I have uh, moved from threading in uh, you know palette processing to I think recently, um, like it's been mm-hmm. four five months now. I'm in love with I think frameworks and Python now. So uh, you know mm-hmm. the what what I feel is this part of using a thing is that um, it is it is very easy to handle. So uh, when you're mm-hmm. using threads or you're using parallel processes, so you need to take care of mm-hmm. everything. So uh, when if we talk about naive uh, multiprocessing or naive threading, multi-threading, so you used to handle the threads, maintain state of every threads. Also, uh, threads when are folks they are heavier as compared to go routine, mm-hmm. uh, core routines. Right. Mm-hmm. So uh, this 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 was one of the uh, you know major benefit. You only have a single entry point, a loop. Which is responsible mm-hmm. to run everything, maintain the state. Mm-hmm. It 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 only takes care of everything that which has to stop, which which has to pause, which has right. to run. So you you right. just sit back and just enjoy the flow, which is going on. Right. And uh, yeah, with event loops, you don't have to uh, worry much about uh, concurrency, like uh, modifying the global objects and these things. Where with threads, you have to consider those aspects as well. Right, you you get race conditions more often. You need to take care right. of them. But when you're using right. core routines, you you don't have to take care of anything like that. Because I I don't I seldom think that there would be any race conditions if you're using core routines, because it is all taken mm-hmm. care by uh, the process itself, and no no mm-hmm. two core routines are working simultaneously. Right, right, right. This is concurrency. This is not parallelism. Right, right, and exactly. So yeah, cool. and and it comes to be way more faster than threads. I feel because I have seen the performance improvement when I moved to I think from uh, I was using concurrent futures before. Mm-hmm. So uh, I I am still using it, but this time I'm using it with I think my uh, mm-hmm. uh, runners, I think runners. So you have mm-hmm. option to use your executors as well for blocking codes. Yeah, for non-blocking right. code, uh, if you're using like AIO, HTTP, you're using or AI files, it is way, way faster. But if you're using a blocking code, so then you will have to obviously mm-hmm. use executors. So using right. executors also, you know, won't affect your performance. Mm-hmm. They, are, they work very seamlessly and very, very fast. Hmm. Only a so bit. I would like to. Uh, yes, okay, please go on. Yeah, only, only a drawback is that I think framework is quite difficult to catch at first. But once you right, get used right. to it, then it is like a gig walk. OK, so I would like to point out one important uh, concept Satyam pointed, like uh, parallelism versus concurrency. So with Python threads, as you can see in this graph, uh, the gel is switching between these four threads. Okay. Whenever like uh, there is a weight on some URL, it is a uh, gel is switching and letting that thread wait but executing other things. So this is uh, concurrency. Right. Achieved. So, so you can achieve concurrency with Python threads, but not parallelism on multiple cores. Right. Which is different from other languages like uh, C++ and Java. Yeah. And uh, in Python also, you can, if you really want to achieve that uh, like parallelism, then uh, you can write your C++ C extensions and float uh, in that layer and spawn C++ threads. This is what NumPy and other libraries do uh, right. to uh, give give you uh, the performance given in Python. Right, right. So, uh, you know, initially I was working on this, but uh, my process required multiple things to work together. So uh, I moved the same, I migrated the same code to Golang for that purpose. Mm-hmm. So Golang is mm-hmm. like meant for concurrency. So now right. I am using a mix of Python and Golang to work in sync. Mm-hmm. I've written few services in Python, few in uh, Golang. I which, which services needs to run uh, more concurrently, those I have migrated to Golang. And the other services are in Python because Python is very easier to write. It is quick to you know mm-hmm. uh, write a service and bring it up. Yeah, so there is a, always a trade-off of some sort. Right, song. right, right. We have uh, a minute or so. Uh, if anyone else would like to ask more questions, okay.
okay um, i will uh, end the talk thank you guys so much for joining i hope you had a, a good learning time with this talk thank you